So describe the kind of usual way of picking events one by one, right? And what the problem with that is. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we've all heard. Yeah, I know you've always <laughs> been there. We have to go there. So we've got the execute whim. We've got the always done it. And those are probably two of the main ways that events get uh, picked or a very loud sales team that are, are demanding presence. And and in some cases that works, and but some cases it doesn't. It's really about making sure that you're using events in the right way because they are not the answer to everything. And when they are the right answer, you're optimizing both the choice of events and then the way that you activate those events to drive outcomes. So for portfolio planning is really about thinking about the who and the why and, and then the how. You know, I love a couple of things that you said there that I want to jump into. So one is the have to always done. I find this fascinating. If anybody listens to me, or he reads my babbles on LinkedIn, I essentially say all the time, like having done this for 12 years with trade shows, one of the main questions that we ask anybody who comes to us or that we engage with about their trade shows and events, we always say, why are you going to this event or these series of events? And the answer so often is, I don't know. We've always gone. We have to support the association and, and it's, there's really no purpose. There's no intention. There's no real why behind it. So I think you saying that when it comes to portfolio planning for kind of the long haul is huge problem in the industry. And I wonder like, what are your thoughts? Like, where does that stem from? Is it just a person in the seat who's under-resourced, doesn't have direction from stakeholders? Is it, is it a company issue? Where do you think that comes from? I think it could be a lot of things. And, and I don't think that there's one answer. I think it's many event professionals maybe don't feel like they have a voice and can ask these things and can question the yeah. why. Maybe they don't know to question the why. And that's always that's always my the first question I'll ask. Why are we doing this? What is success? How do we know we've been successful at the end? And those are really, really important questions. In some cases, it might be that your organization doesn't want to listen. And that's a whole different challenge, quite frankly. But there are ways around that as well, about using your data, using benchmarking as what other companies are doing to, to tell your story and help really earn the seat at the table to, to talk about the why and, and question the why. So we have a question from Kimberly. Kimberly, thank you so much for asking a question. It's my favorite part of the show when we do it. First thing, before I lose my train of thought, because I will lose my train of thought, is the whole stakeholder thing. So as an event manager, event marketer, whatever the title may be that people have, they could be associate marketers. It doesn't matter. They get thrown in the fire. But I always encourage people, and I could be wrong because I'm not in these seats, so I'm saying things that maybe is not perfect. But I would, as a person who who owns and runs a business, when people in my company are asking questions and asking smart questions, I'm like, that is the right person for this place. So I always encourage, and I could be wrong, but if you're in that seat and you don't know why, and you don't know the purpose, and you don't know the, to what you just said, like the who, the why, the what, like all the W's of what you're doing, go ask, go start poking and prying. And if someone pushes back, say, Hey, not trying to ruffle feathers. I just want to know what we're doing so I can drive a result that matters. I think it's a simple way of, of operating. I couldn't agree more. And if you're asking the question for the right reason, right? You're asking the question to drive outcomes, not to be difficult. Um, yes. And I think when it's framed up that way, people will respect it. People will listen. Just imagine if you're talking to your like, CMO or your VP of marketing or your director of sales, whoever you have the access to saying, Hey, like I want us to go to these events and trade shows to go drive a result a, a business outcome, pipeline impact. Like you name it, you tell me you're in charge. I, I want to know what you want to accomplish. That's going to make this department look good, be worth our spend. You start asking questions like that. People start to recognize and say, Hey, like, this person is someone to, to watch for because they get it. They're not just doing their job just to do it. They're seeking an outcome, which I think yeah. is really, really sharp. I, I always say you have to start with the end in mind, right? And yep. it's just oh, going to yeah. make you successful, more successful. If you don't know what success is, how, how, how can you even put a plan in place to achieve it? I agree. I really agree. 